The way that our JavaScript code executes is the browser reads from the top to the bottom of our file and executes each line in order. Now, most often, that doesn't necessarily mean the code will run in that order, just that the browser reads it in that order. So there are lots of different programming flow things that change the order of your code. But primarily, you're always starting at the top and going down. So right here, we have this alert. If I was to put another alert after it, like this, and then refresh, you'd see it does the hello alert, and then it does the really alert. So it's just going in order. I could do another thing here called document.write, which isn't really the best way to get stuff into your HTML file, but right now it works for us. So it's right here. All right, now I'll go back to my browser and refresh. So it says hello, and then really, and then you can see over here, it wrote the word here into my document. So our code is starting at the top and working its way down, but other things can get in the way of the order of execution. They can change what happens, they can make code execute more than once, and they can wait for the user to interact. And the next series of videos will talk about all those sort of programming flow things and control functions that you have in your programming language. Let's look at a little bit of the syntax that I've written here. So we have a few different things. Right here, we have the word alert. And that is a function that's built into the browser. And what a function is, is a reusable piece of code. And there's a video on functions. Now, the way that I know this fun this is a function is because it's immediately followed by these brackets right here. So if I have a word followed by open and close round brackets, that tells me it's a function. So looking right here, you can see I have the word write followed by open and close brackets, and that tells me that the word write here is also a function. Now, inside the brackets here, I have some text, and you'll notice the text is surrounded in quote marks. So JavaScript actually doesn't care if you use single or double quotes as long as you're consistent. So if you open with single, you have to close with single. So whenever we have some basic text in our, in our, uh, our code, we wrap it in quotes like that. And you'll notice at the end of the line here, we have a semicolon. So every line that, ends, that doesn't end in a curly brace, an opening or closing curly brace, uh, mostly has semicolons. Now, JavaScript is actually OK if you leave the semicolons off, not like CSS. So if we refresh, you can see it still works exactly the same way. But you can, into, can run into a little weird issues every once in a while if you're not really careful about that. So we have right here, we have these are pieces of text. We have functions. This right here is actually called an object because you can see it's a word followed by a dot. And objects are a collection of other things. So like a function being a collection of reusable code, an object is a collection of a whole bunch of different things. Lastly, we can have numbers in our code. So numbers would just be like this without any quotes around them. So those are numbers. This right here is a string. We have functions, and we have objects, and a few other, other things called arrays and other data types, which we're going to look at the data types in the next video.